faithful father. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you for loving us like no one else could have. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you. Thank you. Minister to us this morning, oh God. Speak, your sons and daughters are listening. Our hearts are open to you, God. I avail myself as a vessel, speak through me. And at the end of it all, let Jesus be exalted and let me decrease. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, I said we are looking this morning at Jesus as the door. We have looked at, at Jesus as a bread of life. We saw him as the light of the world. And we saw him, we began by seeing uh, him as the great I am. And today we are looking at Jesus saying, I am the door. I am the door. It's amazing that he doesn't say, I am a door. I am the door. And, and in life, uh, we all enter doors. I can't imagine a house without a door. Everybody will be jumping in through the window. <laughs> I can't imagine how that house is going to look like. But door, doors are the only way we get access into places or access out of places. Uh, but at times, a door is not just a physical door. Somebody will say, oh, I just had an opening, a door of education open to me. Or a door of a career open to me. Or a door of of promotion open to me. We have doors that open up to us every day in life or uh, different stages in life. Some of the doors are incredibly good, but some of the doors are traps and enticements of the enemy. Because at times a door can be a door of a friend inviting us uh, for, for a party and after the party, we realized that we, 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 maybe we got our first taste of a drug or our first taste of alcohol. And after that, we come back and it's stuck on us and we are trying to let it go and it can't. So that was a door that was an enticement. It looked like a party, but then it ended up in destruction. And as I was thinking of this, of, of, of this uh, scripture, I thought of my own life as a, as a teenager when my friends were making me feel like, you are too Christian, you used to call me Holy Mary. And, and I started feeling bad about myself and then doors opened to like, be like us. Have fun and enjoy life like us. Come, let's go for parties. And I entered into the door not knowing that that door was a door that was an enticement that was going to be destructive to my destiny, to what God had for me apart from his mercy. And for years, I was completely off from the, the path. I entered the wrong door. I was completely out off from the path that God had for me. But in his mercy, by the time I was finishing high school, he opened another door. Another door that brought me back to him. Another door in which my soul was saved. My life was rescued from destruction. So in life, doors open constantly uh, to us. And as we look at the text that we, we, uh, we are looking at, it's, it's hard to fully jump into chapter 10 and just talk about Jesus being the door without looking at the context of what is happening. What is happening here is if you read chapter 9, Jesus has healed this blind man. Somebody was blind from birth, Jesus heals them and now they can see and everybody's rejoicing like, yes, God, thank you, a miracle has happened. But strangely, some people are upset. That somebody who was blind finally sees. Can you imagine that your promotion or your victory becomes something of anger for somebody else? Why would somebody's freedom make another person upset when that person has been bound all their life? And these Pharisees get so angry and they start questioning the blind man. Okay, tell us a little. Who healed you? And the guy says, oh, Jesus picked mud from the ground. I'm um, going put speed on it and you rubbed it on my eyes and I can see. And they call the guy's parents, like ask them, is this truly your son? Was he blind from birth? And Jesus is like, the parents are like, yeah. And they ask the parents, so how did he get healed? Because the parents were afraid of the Pharisees. They were like, uh... He's old enough. Can you just ask him? We don't want to get involved in this thing. And, and like, I feel like so many times we are there when we are like, I don't really want to talk about it because I don't want to get into trouble. I better just seal my mouth and just pretend like I don't really know the details. And that's what the parents do. And they turn and they ask the guy, so tell us, explain. And the guy explains. And the, the Pharisees, they are arguing amongst themselves. Some are saying that he's a, Jesus is a prophet. Others are saying he's from the devil. He's breaking the Sabbath and all of that. And the guy just like, if this man was not, if he was from the devil, how would he do this kind of good? 
How would he heal the blind eyes? How would he make uh, blind people to see? Like there is no way somebody from the devil would do such a thing. And the, people, the, the Pharisees get so upset and they excommunicate this man who is now seen out of the synagogue. And for a Jew, that is significant because that is the core of your life. A Jewish person, your life is centered around the synagogue. It's like you're excommunicated from being a Christian. Like from now on, you are not a Christian. You're excommunicated from the church. And, and that's the background in which Jesus comes. And he starts, if you read from verse 1, he's in this argument and telling the Pharisees that they are wolves and they are blind themselves and all these things that he says to them. And then later comes down to be able to, to just tell himself that I am the door and that the Pharisees have no right uh, to stop anyone from entering because he is the door. So we are going to just, I'm going to read uh, verse 10, sorry, verse 7 uh, to 10 and then jump, go down, just. The Bible says, therefore Jesus said, very, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and they go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Uh, one of the things about this text is that uh, somehow we believe there's so much in the text. Like it's one of those texts that you can preach a whole series on and never really, and not finish. But we are focusing only on Jesus as a door. So that's why we are going to just ignore some of the, not really like just ignore, but put it down for a, like pause it. And, <laughs> and so what is happening is somehow we believe that probably this was a winter season. Some of you are farmers, you know, where during winter season, you have to bring your sheep into the sheep pen. So Jesus is telling, when this has happened, Jesus starts giving this illustration. Because in the winter, most often, the, the shepherds in Israel would take their sheep into a sheep pen. It was like an, at times it was built like in a cave, let's say like something like this, but it was covered. And the only thing that was remaining was a door that would give access to the shepherd and the sheep. And so, in the day, the sheep, they were going to go out, they were going to graze, feed, and do everything. And then even in the evening, they are going to come back in. And when they come back in, there were several shepherds, but they had a chief shepherd. So, every, all the other shepherds, people who took care of the sheep, would bring their sheep. And at times, like a whole community will use one sheep pen. So, all the sheep will go in. And when the shepherd comes in the morning or the next day, all they do is a call their sheep. Would, the, the shepherds would come and they would just call their sheep by name. Probably a lot of you know if you have a dog, the dog knows how by, your, by the time you're coming and you just say something, do, 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 like mommy's around, daddy's around. And, and the Bible said the sheep, they knew the name of the shepherd. There's actually a story told, I don't know how true it is, of two shepherds, uh, two people who came and one was accusing another that they had stolen their sheep. So they went to court and did everything and everything, and they realized there was really no proof. There was nothing they could do to prove who stole and who was, like, who is right and who is wrong. So at the end, the judge said, okay, all of you go outside and stand outside on the door. And we are going to let the sheep, they called the sheep to be the witness. And they brought the sheep all into the courtroom. And the, the two guys went outside. They asked the first one who was accusing the person who had said that they have stolen the sheep. They're like, can you call? The sheep. And they called and all of the sheep was like hiding. And then the second person who was being accused called the sheep. And the sheep burst through the door and ran in. And they're like, okay, you won. The sheep is yours. Because the sheep recognizes the voice of their master. They recognize that, oh, this is my master. There is a way you've been in relationship with them. They have been in relationship with them and all of that. And they recognize their voice. So this is, exact, this is like approximately what is happening in this text. And when the shepherds will come back, when all the sheep are inside, the shepherd, there was no door. There was an opening for a door, but the door didn't have like a door that you close, it wasn't locked. So the shepherd would sleep. I'm not going to sleep though. The shepherd would sleep on the door. They sleep, they sleep and they became the door. So when Jesus says, I'm the door, so the shepherd sleeps and becomes the door. And so nothing can enter except the shepherd gives access. 
Nobody can enter, no enemy can enter except the shepherd gives access. And you hear David talking about him killing the bear and the lion. We don't know if it was in the, in the summertime, if it were in the summer, probably it was in the field. But if it was in the winter when the sheep was in the sheep pen, it means they came trying to have access to his sheep. And he was like, no, I am the good shepherd. You can't have access to the sheep that is under my protection. And so that's what the shepherd would do. The shepherd would protect the sheep from anything entering. But then also the shepherd would inspect the sheep. They had a, when the sheep was coming in, they had like a rod to inspect. Maybe the shepherd went out, the sheep went out and then got poop on its leg to make sure that it is clean. It doesn't come in and infect other sheep that was in. So that's the context in which this is happening. And so the first thing, so when Jesus is telling them, I am the door, the first thing I think he's saying is that, he is the access to the kingdom, and it's only through him that we can have access to the kingdom. The Pharisees were not the door. They were trying to excommunicate somebody that they didn't have a right to excommunicate. The, the pastor is not the way to the kingdom. The, the bishop is not the way to the kingdom. An elder is not the way to the kingdom. A friend is not the way to the kingdom. Jesus alone is the door to the kingdom. It means nobody has a right to stop anybody from coming into the kingdom because the sheep pen is a kingdom. And that's why I like it because the sheep pen, you have the sheep of different shepherds. You have the Catholic sheep, you have the Presbyterian sheep, you have the Christian church sheep. It's all sheep and they are all part of the kingdom. And isn't, isn't it funny that at times we fight one another when we all are in one kingdom? And we focus about the minute things. Oh, you don't pray like I pray, so you really are not part of the kingdom. No, we don't belong to the kingdom by how we pray. We belong to the kingdom because the door gave us access. Jesus gave us access. That's the only reason why we belong to the kingdom. Oh, your church doesn't take communion every Sunday. We take it every Sunday, so you don't. No, I still belong to the kingdom. Oh, you all dress a certain way and we don't dress like that. It doesn't matter. I still belong to the kingdom because it's the door, Jesus, who gave me access into the kingdom. So nobody can stop anybody from coming into the kingdom. It doesn't matter how our past has been. And I think if a human could have been the one who gives access, there were many people who would be dis disqualified from coming into the kingdom. We'll be like, oh no, you have more than this person. You are so wicked, you do not qualify for the kingdom. Your life is so messed up, you do not qualify for the kingdom. Your past is just too broken, you do not qualify for the kingdom. But I love it that Jesus is the only one, the only door to the kingdom. So no one can stop me. No one can stop you. No one can stop us from coming in. But then also that reminds us to know that we can't be a hindrance. Remember the Bible talks about the Pharisees that they are like whitewashed tombs. They are not entering the kingdom, but all they do is stand as a stumbling block from others, for others from entering. Because the way we live can be a stumbling block for others to enter the kingdom. So are we helping people to get close to Jesus so they can have access to the kingdom? Or are we stopping them halfway and telling them you have to fix it all before you ever come close? So Jesus says, I am the only access into the kingdom. Nobody else can come in. In John chapter 3, he says, uh, God so loved the world that whosoever, whosoever has no restrictions, whosoever believes, will not perish but have everlasting life. In John chapter, in John um, uh, 1, 12, he says, to as many as believe him, he gave them power to become sons and daughters of God. So anyone, the Pharisees were trying to stop somebody from the kingdom when Jesus was giving him access. How do you stop somebody that Jesus has given access to, into the kingdom? The second thing, when Jesus says, I am the door, he's saying exclusive. He didn't say, I am a door. He didn't say, I am one of the doors. He didn't say, I am an assistant door or whatever. It's like, you, you can, President Biden cannot say, I am a president in the United States. He is the president of the United States. A former president would say, I, I was a president because there are several of them. But President Biden can only say, I am the president. He is the, he's not a president, he is the president. And Jesus is making a claim here that I am the way, the only way. You can't have access to my father except by me. 
You can, there is no other way to the Father. There is no other way to God except by me. I am the door. If you enter through another side, you are probably a thief. The only way you can come in is through me. And, and that is so provoking because we real, one of the things about John, John is trying to like reveal Jesus as a Messiah to, to the people. And we see Jesus constantly over and over presenting himself as God, as like the only, he keeps using the word, I am the, not I am a, uh, I am the. Almost like there is no other. And if that, I was talking with, with a friend yesterday, I was like, if this, if this is not real, if Jesus, being, not being, if Jesus was not the only way, then the death of Jesus on the cross wasn't valid. Because what makes him the way is his God, he, God coming through Christ, dying on the cross, raising, rising from the dead and ascending back to the Father. If we, if we could walk our way to salvation, then the death of Christ wouldn't have been valid. Then Easter has no value. If we could fix our way or do some things enough, keep the law enough to get saved, then Jesus' death would not have been valid. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. That's what scriptures tell us. The only way to the Father, the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. We don't get to God by fixing ourselves. We get to God by surrendering to Jesus. So Jesus is saying, I am the only way. It's exclusive. Ex exclusive. That is, like it, it shakes our core in the pluralistic world where we say there are many ways to get to God. Like it shakes, it shakes that very core because Jesus is saying, yeah, I am the way. I am not a way. I am the way. So there is no other way to the Father except through me. I am the gate. I am the door. That's the only way we get in. But another thing um, that Jesus is saying when he says, I am the door, he's saying, I am here to protect you. You remember in Psalms 91? He who dwells in the center of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Jesus is like, I am the good shepherd. I will protect you. Dangers will come in life. The enemy will come constantly and he's coming constantly. But you can trust that I am the door. I will not give him access. I will fight the wolves on your behalf. I will fight the lions on your behalf. I will fight the tigers on your behalf. I am here to protect you. I am on your side. And I like Christopher's poem when he, when he was sharing like the chiseling and all of that. At times the chiseling, we think that God is against us. But he's actually on our side. Because it's the chiseling that makes us become all he's called us to be. But when he's chiseling us and breaking us, at times it feels like it's so painful. We don't like it. We think that he's against us. But it's actually for us. That's why the chiseling is happening. So he's saying, I am your protection. I will not let danger come to you. I will protect you from the enemy. I will preserve you. I will be there to fight. Does it mean that you will not go through trials and temptation? No, that's not what it means. He's saying that I, I will be your defense. Even when trials come, I will be there to watch over you. I will be there to defend you. I will be there to save you from the traps of the enemy, from the wolves. So stay in the kingdom. Stay in the kingdom. The next thing when Jesus is saying, I am the door, he's saying that. I'm calling you to freedom. The text says that the sheep, they come in and they go out and they find pasture. There is so much freedom and grace. And at times we even believe as we come to the Lord, but we still walk in so much bondage because of a mindset we have had. And our spirit is free, but we are still, we are still enslaved by the lies, by the culture, and we still want to live by, by, by standards and things that do not um, uh, honor and glorify God. And Jesus is saying, I am calling you to freedom. I'm calling you to freedom. I'm calling you to freedom. The sheep would come and they go back every morning. And when the sheep would come, uh, the shepherd would inspect them. And I wanted to just do something this morning to be able to just illustrate. And I'm going to call uh, four people who are going to help me. Uh, Bill, Carol, Joy. Oh, sorry, I said Joyce. <laughs> Doris. Misty, do you want to help also, please? Okay. So I have the posters right there and they're going to help me with this.
And I'm going to imagine that I am Jesus. If I wore pants, maybe I would have slept, but I'm going to just, I'm going to stand because I think I need to stand to be able to protect this door. And this is a ship in the kingdom of God. And uh, can we get the, Carol, can you come first? And we have, Carol signifies an unbeliever. Somebody who does not know Jesus, they have never known. Okay. I just wrote it halfway. <laughs> they have never known the Lord. They have never had a relationship with Jesus. And they come and they want to know Jesus. And they are like, God, my life is so broken and messed up. I don't know if I can have access. And guess what? Jesus says, oh, come on in. I, that's actually why I died. Can you come on in? Come into my kingdom. This is, your sin is taken away. It is forgiven. It is washed. And now you are clean and you are part of the kingdom and then we have some other believers you know at times we give our lives to christ and but then we are still bound by so many things and you have the shame and the guilt and the fear and the insecurities and the pain that just still bind bind us in our hearts and at times we carry that we carry that every day we walk with it even though we are part of the kingdom and jesus is like i am the door when you come to me in prayer you can bring that to me and you can lay it at my feet and i will carry that pain you don't have to walk in guilt. You don't have to walk in insecurity. You don't have to walk in shame. I have set you free. And Jesus comes and he says, come on, my daughter, give me all your shame and your guilt and your fear and your pain. I want to take it away. You come and I want you to be free. Enter into my kingdom. Walk in freedom. I don't want you to carry weight upon you. Just walk in freedom. Because in my kingdom, it's a place where there is freedom. And then other believers come and they have all these on, for, on confessing. You know, they're like, well, I can't really, nobody knows that I did that. I can't just really struggle. And then there is this addiction. They can't really talk about it to anybody else because what if I tell somebody that I'm struggling with addiction? They will say I'm not a Christian. And, and what if I, I, I say, my, I'm just so lukewarm and I can't really pray. I've been a whole week. I've not even talked to God. I've not prayed. I've not even read my Bible. I just feel like my relationship with God is dying. I feel like I've lost my passion and my love for God. But God, guess what? Because Jesus is the door, he says, even that one too, you can bring it. You can bring that lost lack of passion and everything to him. And guess what? He will tell you, come on into the kingdom. And I'm going to restore your passion. I will set your soul on fire. I will put a revival in your spirit. And I will make your heart whole again. I will ignite love in you like you have never done before. I am the door. You can bring anything to me. There is no restriction to what you can bring to me. If it was a human being who was the door, there might be some restrictions. But Jesus says, I am the door. There are no restrictions to what I can receive. Just bring them because when you bring them, one of the things I do when you come to the door is that I do a cleansing. I remove the things I must not enter with you in and make sure they are taken out and so you can walk in freedom and you can walk light. You can walk a light, a life that is full, abundant. That's why he says, the thief comes to steal and to kill, but I have come that you might have life and life, have life to its fullness. Zoe kind of life. The full life. When you're in your home in the morning and you are laughing and somebody like, what happened? But you just think of the joy of the Lord and it fills your heart and you are overwhelmed by his goodness and kindness. Where you are so set free in your soul, in your spirit and every part of you. God says that is what he's calling us because Jesus is the door. You can bring any weight and lay it. There is no need to carry it. But guess what? Even though Jesus is the door, we also have at times the enemy tries to come. He tries to come close. He tries to come and steal us with his lies. He tries to come and attack us. And he tries to, to be like bring danger and all of that. And Jesus is saying, I am right here, devil. You won't have access to me. Not to my people. Not to these ones that I love. I will defend them. I will protect them. I will not give you access. I will not let you in. They are precious to me. I love them so much. And what is funny is that at times, even though we are in, we listen to the lies of the devil outside. And at times, some sheep want to jump out of the fence to go out and listen to the devil. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. I don't want to let you out. I love you so much. Stay in. 
Stay in. I love you. What I'm doing is I'm protecting you from the attacks. I'm protecting you from future trouble. I'm protecting you from danger. Would you just stay in? Don't listen to the enemy's lies. I love you so much. I want to preserve you. Thank you all so much. So this morning, as we look at Jesus as the door, I want us to know that there is no way else to the Father. There is no other way to get access to him except through his Son. And because Jesus is the one who gives us access, each one of us has access. (laughs) Whether it's in prayer, whether it's with something that we are struggling with, he wants us to bring it. He wants us to come. He gives us access. He wants us to walk in freedom like never before. He wants us to experience his joy, his liberty. Because that's what he has called us to be. So what would you do with this door? Are you going to walk in? Are you going to bring those cares and those worries and lay them down? The things that weigh your heart and... Steal the sleep from your eyes. Would you bring them so you can experience freedom? The freedom that comes only from the door. Or do you want to carry that weight again? But Jesus says, I am the door. Would you listen to the lies of the enemy that keeps trying to entice and chain your soul? Or would you listen to the Son of God who has paid the price for our redemption? He has paid it all. We don't have to walk anymore. All we need to do is step in through that door and it is over. Can we bow our heads in prayer this morning? You might have a weight or something that you've been carrying. This is an opportunity to to enter the door. Bring it to the door. Let him take it off. So you can experience his freedom like never before. A pain, an unforgiveness, whatever it is. Can we just bring all those at the feet of the cross this morning? Jesus wants to take it off our shoulders. And maybe there's someone watching me online and you have never had a relationship with Jesus. You've never passed through this door. You've been trying to walk your way to salvation. You've been trying to to fix your own life, Jesus is ready to welcome you just as you are so he can change your life and turn your life around. All you need to do is to step in and he will receive you. It doesn't matter how your past has looked like. He he doesn't really care. That's why he died. (laughs) That's why he came. He came for the broken. He came for the sinners. He came for those of us who were blind. So he can give us sight. So this morning, Father, we are so thankful. Thankful, Lord, for your son, Jesus, that he is the door and that we can walk in through that door. I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray if there be any weight, God, that this morning they will be lifted as we bring them at the foot of the cross. For those who do not have a relationship with you, I pray for reconciliation, Lord for transformation in their heart and in their lives that will experience a newness as they come and turn their hearts to you. May we walk in freedom because you give us access. In Jesus' name, amen.